One of my favorite parts of the Lumetri color effect is the curve section. This area allows you to finely focus luminance, contrast, and color. Let's take a look at a couple of shots and how we can leverage both the RGB curves adjustment as well as the U saturation curves adjustment to get this image to look just a little bit better. Now, this image has definitely a color cast and I cheated a little bit or maybe I helped you a little bit because the first thing I did was a basic correction and I already have this set in. You'll see if I turn this off, the image is kind of dark doesn't have a lot of good dynamic range, it's low contrast. So I fixed this in advance so we can focus on using curves to really fine tune our contrast and fix this color tint. You'll notice that before I fix the luminance, you can actually see a lot more yellow in this image than after I fixed it. Now jumping back down to the curve section, we'll look at RGB curves first. If you have clicked another color, make sure that you click on the white circle because this allows you to work with all three colors simultaneously. Thus, you're working with just the luminance in the image. And what I like to do here is create an S curve. You'll notice that if I grab it anywhere along the line and push up, I'm raising the luminance values of just the brightest areas or bringing down the luminance values of the brightest areas. So this is where the Lumetri color effect really shows off finesse. So I can go ahead and bring up my highlights exactly where I want them and grab my shadows and bring them down so they stay nice and rich. An S curve is one of the best ways to create nice contrast in an image with just a couple of clicks. Now that we have this image pop from a luminance standpoint, let's go ahead and fix the color cast. If you look at the RGB parade, you'll notice there's a lot of red and a lot less blue. And if you look at the vector scope, once again, there's a predominance of that red and orange and this location really isn't truly yellow. I want this to look neutral. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the red circle and you'll notice now that the red line has moved to the front. Now I can simply grab the part of the red that I want to reduce and I want to just bring down really the highlights over here and that translates to the upper part of this graph. So I'm going to click on it, it creates a keyframe and I can go ahead and pull it down and I'm looking at my scope and I see that it's doing what I want and if I go ahead, I can even grab that keyframe and work in different areas, but I want it to be up here. I'm going to bring it down and you'll notice that it is looking a little bit green, but I'm going to fix that with the next adjustment. By the way, if you ever want to just reset any one of these adjustments, you can simply do it by double clicking in the black area and it resets whichever adjustment is selected. So let's go back and pull out some of that red. I'm going to pull it down just a little bit and I'm going to move over to the green and there's a little bit too much green in here so I can go ahead and grab that. I'm going to do that from the mid-range, bring it down and you'll notice that the image is actually starting to look more neutral. If I overdo it, the red's going to take over and this is an important thing to consider is take careful note of what your RGB parade is doing and look at your vector scope because I want to make sure that this is more towards the center than up in this area. So obviously I need to add a little bit of blue or cyan to this. So I'm going to go ahead, click on that. Now I'm working with the blues in my image and I'm going to just pump them up a little bit and you'll notice that I'm getting more of a neutral image. And you can tweak this until you get it just right and if you ever mess up, as I said, simply double click. It's real easy to make an image look ugly if you do something wrong with all of your keyframes. So a simple reset and a fine tweaking will solve our problems. That looks pretty good to me. Now, once again, the best way to compare the before and after 
especially in the case of multiple sections being used to correct your image, is to simply hit the F key and we can see an image that doesn't have the punch as the corrected image and is a little too yellow. Now, I do wanna point out one thing here when you're performing color corrections. A lot of times your eyes actually white balance the image you're looking at. Your brain corrects the color. So it's a good thing to look at the before and the after and sometimes just look away from your screen at a nice neutral gray wall to reset your eyes. And once I've done this, I notice that it is a little more red than I want it to be. So I'm gonna simply hop back here, grab the red control and tweak that and just move that up just a hair to take out that red tint. So working with curves is an awesome way to fine tune an image, letting you control not only contrast, but color cast. Now let's explore the power of the hue saturation curve in this section. So let's jump to the next clip in our sequence. And as you can see, we have this bright red car. But the first thing I wanna do is I do wanna create that S curve. I'm gonna go over here and click in the highlights area. And if I bring it down a little bit, you notice how I can make the sky look a little bit richer, a little bit deeper. And if I think that my shadows are starting to lose some of their detail, I can bring that up a little bit. So a simple tweak there and suddenly the image looks that much better. Let's bring the car fully into frame by moving a few frames forward and we're gonna work with a hue saturation curve. This simple curve is incredibly powerful. For instance, if I wanna just work with the reds in my shot, all I have to do is click on the little red dot and three control points are created. And now I can manipulate just the red part of the image. So for instance, I could go down here and remove the red from the image. And as you see, the car is becoming black and white, but nothing else in the image is. And if I needed to get some of these sections, I can simply grab one of the outer control points and move it over a little bit. And this is gonna change the threshold or the location of the reds that I'm fixing. I can add a control point by simply clicking on the interface, creating a new control point and bring this down. And as you see, I've made this car perfectly gray. Let's go ahead and reset this. And resetting this is real easy. All you have to do is double click anywhere within the circle and you're back to neutral. What I wanna do is make the image really pop, make it really vibrant, but I don't want to have the car get too bright. Now, if I just grab the outer ring without creating any control points, I can increase or decrease saturation. And as you see, the image gets brighter, but my eye is still drawn to the red of the car. So once again, double click to reset it, click on the red button, I've created the control points I want, but instead of grabbing these control points, I'm gonna to go to the opposite side of the circle, grab the ring and pull it out. In effect, saturating every other part of the image except for the red car. As you see, using this adjustment can be incredibly powerful. Maybe the yellows are again too saturated. I simply click on the yellow button New control points are created, and I'm gonna go ahead and pull down the saturation of just the yellow. I really love this tool. It allows me to really refine an image without much fuss or bother.